Hey everybody, it's Mike Wardinsky here, and I've got a great tutorial about layer mask in Photoshop. This is part two of my layer masking series, so if you haven't watched the first video, go ahead and click the link up above. If you have, stay tuned because I'm going to cover some really great features of layer mask and selections today. Before we get started, don't forget to check out naturemike.com for some great how-to articles, in-field photography workshops, and private post-processing lessons. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in. As you saw from my first video, layer masking is a really powerful tool, and today we're going to go ahead and take those skills to the next level. So we have this beautiful pier here. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer, and I'm going to create a, a different version of it, just a, a warmer version for our concrete here, because I want to have a warmer pier, but I like this nice blue background. So I'm going to go ahead and warm up the temperature slider, and maybe add a little bit of magenta because it looks like there was a bit of a green cast in there. And that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to hit OK. OK, so now we got our cool layer on top and our warmer layer on the bottom. And now we want to blend these two together. Now I could go to select and choose sky, but that's not going to do a good job of selecting our ocean here, as you can see. And I could do select subject and hit OK here, and it'll do a little bit better job, but it's still missing some things, and realistically, I'd rather select my sky and ocean anyway, because whatever is selected, we're going to see of the top layer, and we want to cut down to that bottom layer. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect this. Command D, that would be Control D on a PC, or select, deselect. And now I'm going to choose the Quick Selection tool. Since we don't have a lot of texture, this is going to be the easiest way to make a selection. So I'm going to use the right bracket key to increase the size here. And I'm going to click and drag. And you can see we already did a pretty good job on the right side. Do it again on the left. Keep dragging and drag up. And that's looking pretty good. I'll shrink the brush down using the left bracket key. And that's looking pretty good. Now you can see we don't have a perfect selection in here. Not the end of the world. I'll just hold the Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and just kind of click and drag over there. And you can see when I do that, if you look in the upper left corner, when I hold Option or Alt, it switches to a negative. When I let go, it goes back to a positive. And so we want to cut this out. So I'm going to go to a negative, hold Option or Alt, drag in there. And over here, holding Option, I'll drag right there. And that looks like a pretty good selection. Oops. I'm going to drag that back in. Hold Option, drag that out. Just kind of finessing it. And we're going to blur this anyway with a brush so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And that looks good. The only thing I'm noticing is this piece right here. And so I'm going to shrink the brush down quite small with my plus sign and just drag up. I'll let go, let the software kind of learn what I'm trying to do, and I'll keep dragging up. And continuing right to that corner. And it did a pretty good job. Didn't quite get the complete edge here, though. So I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to hold Option and just drag down and try and teach Photoshop what I'm actually trying to do. And it looks like it went too far. And this is common. You'll get this when you're making selections. You kind of got to finesse it. And over time, it gets better at it as you go. Hold Option or Alt. And that's looking pretty good. If I need to adjust these later on, I can. Um, but I think it's it's good enough, um, at least for this example. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. And now I'm noticing just a few little holes right up here, right where this ladder is. I'm going to kind of click in there. And right there. Shrink the brush down, do an even more refined adjustment. And one more up here. Let me bring the size back up. And shrink her back down. And 
And that's pretty good. Okay. So we spent a bit of time making this selection, and we don't want to lose it. So before we go any further, we're going to save this selection. That way we can always come back to it in case we need it in the future. So I'm just going to go to the top of the screen, choose Select, and Save Selection. Now we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it Sky and Ocean. And I'll hit OK. And now if I look in my Channels tab, there it is, Sky and Ocean. If you don't see this tab, just go to Window and choose Channels, and you can just kind of drag it and nest it wherever you'd like. Okay, so now all we need to do is add a layer mask because when you have a selection made and you choose the layer mask icon, whatever is selected in the photo is visible and that whatever is not selected gets cut through. So right now we have our sky and ocean selected, so that will remain visible, but it's going to cut a hole where this pier is, which is going to allow us to see down to this warm layer on the pier. So let's see how that works. I'm going to go down here, choose layer mask, and there we go. We got a nice warm pier, yet our water stays cool. And to show you how that looks before and after, I'll hold the shift key to turn the layer mask on and off. So there's our before and there's our after. And if I turn the complete layer off, there's the warm layer underneath. Okay, now let's say we want to darken the water and maybe the sky in a couple spots, but not everything. The easiest way to do that might be to create an adjustment layer. We don't have any selections made. And if you want to be certain you don't have one, you can hit Command or Control D or select, deselect. And right now I don't have anything selected, so it's grayed out. Um, and we're going to add a new adjustment layer. And this time I'm going to go ahead and add a curves layer. And I'm just going to drag it down just to darken everything. Maybe somewhere about there. And now we're going to invert this mask. And that's really easy to do. Command I on a Mac or Control I on a PC. And that inverts it so we don't see anything. And now we can take a, our brush tool, B is the shortcut, and we can just brush this effect in wherever we want. But before we start brushing, we want to check a couple of things. Up here in the toolbar, my opacity is set to 20. Maybe I'll take that to about 30. And then our blend mode is set to normal. And I want to make sure that the hard brush hardness is set to zero because we want a nice feather. I don't want this to be hard and noticeable what we're doing. And the last thing is I want to make sure I have my white swatch selected, not black, because I have a black mask. So I'm selecting the mask, and now I can just kind of brush this effect in wherever I want. Now you can see when I did that, it darkened everything. So I'm going to back that out. I'm going to hit Command-Z or Control-Z Control -Z on a PC. And now what we're going to do is go back to our channels and find that mask we saved, which is right here, Sky and Ocean. And all we have to do is Command-Click or control click on a PC right on the mask and it makes the same selection that we used to create the layer mask in the first place. So now we have our sky and our ocean selected and our pier is being protected and now I can take the white brush and kind of brush in and no matter how much I paint on this pier nothing is ever going to happen because the selection is protecting it. So I'm going to go ahead and here, kind of brush in, maybe brush in some of that sky Emphasize some of these dark lines that are already there. Maybe kind of emphasize that shadow. Make it a little more moody so it's not all light tones. And I'll shrink the brush. Maybe do a nice pass on this dark line in the background. And that's looking pretty good. And I can turn that layer mask on and off simply by holding shift and clicking. And I can turn the layer on and off just by clicking the eyeball. Command D to deselect. And I'll hit a snapshot so you can see the uh, before and after. So here's where we started and here's where we are now. You can see it's just a little bit more full and a little more dynamic of an image. And I'll hit Command S or Control S to save and it will automatically pop into Lightroom if that's where we started. Okay. Okay, so this is looking really good, but I want to zoom in here and show you something. If you remember when I was making that so initial selection, I said we might need to feather this edge. And if you look here, this blue layer, our cool layer, has a pretty sharp endpoint. And I can look at that mask by holding Option, and you can see 
that's pretty harsh. And so what I actually want to do is feather that in something kind of like this. But instead of doing it in this mass view, I'm going to back out here. So I'm going to Command Z or Control Z on a PC. And here we are. And now I'm going to do it in the pixel view so you can actually see what's happening. So I've got my mask here. And this is the cool layer up on top. And so if I start to paint here with this soft brush, I'm going to start to paint the cool layer into the pier. So I'm going to do a couple of passes here and just kind of feather that out a little. And do the same thing over on this side. Because we want this to look natural. We don't want any hard edges. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to black and maybe kind of feather into the water now. And then back to white and kind of feather that in once more. And I'm going to go back to the mask and show you what that, that's looking like now. So you can see it's feathered a lot nicer. And maybe we'll kind of feather this in too. And to get back to the pixel layer, I just click on the actual pixel icon here. And that's looking really nice. I've got one more example to show you. And I'm going to show you what it's like to work with a detailed mask and how you can protect that mask. Um, and I know that might not make sense right now, but it will in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to go ahead and do a photo filter. And let's do a cooling filter. Uh, maybe not that one. Maybe I'll just kind of drag this. Maybe something like that. And we'll hit OK. And now I'm going to make a selection based off of color. So I'm going to select color range. And I just take my eyedropper, put it in the sky, and then I can move this fuzziness slider to select a, you know, more or less of the image. The further I drag it to the right, the more of those blue tones that get selected. The more I drag it to the left, the less that gets selected. So I'm going to drag it maybe somewhere here, just kind of affect the sky, maybe something like that. Um, and not, not, none of the pier and none of down here. And I'll hit OK. And that automatically added a layer mask to that adjustment layer. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to hold Option. And you can see it's a pretty detailed mask. It even picked up all those ridiculous uh, dust spots that were on my sensor. Um, luckily, these are pretty much invisible on the normal image. So this isn't the perfect mask in the world, but it will work for our purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the image. And... What I want to do is I want to create a new group layer, and I'm going to put this photo filter adjustment layer inside the group. The reason we're doing this is because I want to protect this layer mask that we built, because if I just go ahead and take my brush and say I start painting it here, maybe I don't want, you know, maybe I want to mask this area out. I'm like, then I decide later on that, no, actually, I do want to add that layer. So I switch back to white. You can kind of see the problem. I've lost all the detail that was in that mask. So that's really not the best method. It's sort of a destructive method uh, if you get past the, uh, you know, certain number of undo steps anyway. So I'm going to undo this. And what we're going to do is, again, we put the adjustment layer inside the group layer. And then we're going to click on our group layer. And I'm going to go ahead and add a layer mask to the group. Now, this way, we can mask out any adjustment in this adjustment layer simply by painting on the group layer. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my black brush since I have a white mask. And you can see I can just kind of brush out here. Now, I'm actually going to increase this photo filter by a lot just so you can actually see what's happening. Okay, so you can see it's there's a lot of blue down here now. And I'm going to lower my opacity to maybe 30%. I'm just going to start to paint that out. There we go, just like that. Now, obviously, this isn't necessarily my exact workflow, but it does work for this example. So you can see I've masked out this layer simply by masking out the group that it's in. So here's my mask that I did to the group. And you can see I still have this beautiful dust-filled mask underneath it. So whenever you have a detailed mask like this, 
and you want to protect it, it's a good idea to put it in a group and then mask out the group. Okay, so I'll go back to my pixel-based image. And whenever you see these red overlays like this, this is showing us our mask. So right now I have this mask selected. If I hit the backslash key, that toggles it on and off. And I can go ahead to this one, you can kind of see these different masks. And these red overlays can be helpful if you're doing a very minor adjustment and you can't quite tell what you've done on the image. The overlay will show you where you've painted and where you haven't. Okay, well that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know we covered a lot and layer masks can be a little confusing, but feel free to leave me a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And last but not least, don't forget to head over to naturemike.com for some more how-to articles, in-field workshops, and a bunch more. I'll see you in the next video.